It is July 26th. This uh, space here, closer, this space here, in this range, with the ropes. Should I take the ropes off? Anyway, um, this is where my uh, net gain 11 inch motor is going. If I can make it fit. Looks like it's going to be able to, to fit, but uh, that's what's happening today, and we're going to get things put together. Um, give her a try. So, on the net gain warp 9 motor and 11 motor, you have uh, counterclockwise, neutral, and clockwise. You have three sets of holes that these bolts on the, on the brush face can, uh, can fit into. This one is uh, currently lined up on counterclockwise, which is uh, what most of the things in the world are. So uh, that's, uh, that's our look at the, uh, the rotation. Um, here, here's our uh, Warp 11 motor. This is the brush side with the smaller shaft, auxiliary shaft. And then uh, this side is the uh, drive end. Bigger shaft, keyed, and uh, a little mesh that keeps the keeps stuff from curling or falling into the that end. And then we've got a shroud for this end that uh, the fan fits onto to blow blow air in there. And uh, we'll take a, a peek at the brushes. Okay, here are the brushes. They're fit into the holders over here with these springs. And if you look down there on the uh, copper. You see, it's all nice and bright and shiny. As I turn, there's no wear marks, there's no grooves. Look, they got a nice patina or uh, lubrication layer on it, and uh, all looks uh, looks good to go inside the inside the car. Okay, now you see the blower, and uh, attaches to a couple of pins on each side. There's a rubber section covered by a steel section, a lot of uh, silicone. And silicone isn't real good for the brushes, so um, uh, I've got my hopes that uh, this has been aired out enough and it's not going to cause me any troubles with my brushes um, as it warms up. So there's one piece coming down here, one piece coming down here, and it's bolted in the middle. So this is, uh, this is pretty much the way the, the motor looks. We'll get to another another view here. So here we have A1 and A2 and then we have uh, S1 up there and S2 down there. So there's a jumper from A1 to S2 and uh, that gives you A2 and S1 left to connect the battery connections to. Um, I don't remember which one is which, we'll figure it out. But uh, it makes a difference um, when you're turning counterclockwise or whether you're turning clockwise. The next thing we're going to do is take this nice, bright, shiny uh, motor adapter and uh, cut this little bit out here, which when I had it in the car seems to be interfering with the, uh, well, it basically runs into the, uh, the axle on the, uh, on the passenger side. So uh, that, we got to Cut that out. I got a sawzall, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it out of there, and then we're gonna test fit it in the car. So here is the adapter, all nice and snug. Pins are fitting in. Um, this little section was cut out so that uh, the axle could fit through. I've got a blank section here that I've got to deal with, and then underneath here there's another one. But uh, all in all, there is uh, several of the bolts fit, and uh, and uh, certainly enough to keep the, uh, the transmission uh, connected to the motor. Okay, on the bottom there we have the, uh, the red uh, piece is the motor adapter. Uh, to the left on top of the uh, little platform there is the uh, coupler. And then hanging on the left is the, uh, is the motor itself. Uh, we're going to be putting the uh, motor adapter onto the motor and uh, sliding the, uh, the motor coupler onto the, uh, onto the shaft, just making sure that everything fits. 
Okay, uh, we're looking at the mounting bolts on the uh, on the face of the uh, warp 11. We'll just zoom in. So uh, this distance um, between the face, uh, I guess the the part of the bolt that's sticking out is. Scroll that down a little bit. That sucker is 11 sixteenths. Um, back out a little bit. Down here, uh, this distance here, the thickness of the plate that we're bolting to is half an inch, which is 8 sixteenths. I got 11 sixteenths sticking out, so these bolts are 3 sixteenths too long. They are an inch and a half. So I guess I need inch and a quarter to be safe so that the bolts don't bottom out so I can verify that they are in, indeed on tightly. And uh, I guess um, that leads me to my next problem, which is uh, figuring out whether the bolt heads uh, have to be uh, inset or on here. It looks like the bolts are just with a washer and, and straight in, right? Um, I guess after I put together more of this, I'll find out whether these bolts actually at that length will work or whether I'm putting washers in or whether, anyway, that's the sort of stuff I'm looking at right now. The coupler is uh, big and thick and heavy. It, uh, it has a uh, uh, key for the shaft. It also has a bearing for the uh, the end of the um, transmission spline shaft thing. Anyway, um, this thing is actually quite a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. It's like three pounds by itself. But uh, it looks like it has to be beefy, so I'm sure Can EV did uh, what they needed to do. Uh, a coupler slides on tight. I'm kind of hesitant to put it on any further. I think I should uh, should take it off and uh, just do a light sanding of the shaft and uh, take off some of the surface corrosion. I think that's why I'm having trouble uh, getting it on. Well, that sort of worked. Um, so taking the uh, abrasive pad to the to the uh, shaft of the motor um, and just uh, taking off the corrosion, uh, buffing it kind of like you're buffing your shoes. Um, it slides on better. Um, I'm still not confident that I'm going to uh, be able to get it off once I'm done. So uh, I'm just going to try and get everything to uh, to fit. And uh, before I I put the keyway in and uh, pound the uh, the coupler on. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't realize it's still moving. So the uh, gap you see here between the adapter plate and the motor isn't supposed to be there. So the bolts are a little too long. So uh, I'm going to use uh, one inch for now uh, just because I want to get it together um, and uh, do some other checks. But uh, I really will need inch and a quarter to do it right. All I've got is grade 5 bolts and I'd really like to use grade 8. So now you can see that there is no gap in there. It's all it's, uh, snug down nicely. And we're still rocking back and forth a little bit. You can see that the bolts are snugged up nice. There's no lock washers in there right now. Uh, there's no lock washers in there. There's no uh, regular washers. I'm just trying to check clearances here. And actually, uh, I'm not going to put the clutch um, on. Uh, I guess I'll show you the clutch. Uh, so firstly, we have the old uh, flywheel. This is the part that bolts on to the motor coupler. And inside the, uh, the flywheel we have the clutch disc, or I think that's what it's called. It's the uh, part that has the, uh, the uh, spline shaft in the middle of the springs, and it has the abrasive disc that engages with the, uh, with the clutch plate, which I will show you now. And the clutch plate has these springs that uh, you push here and it pulls the uh, pressure away from the outsides. That's when you put the clutch in. Right now the clutch is out. 
springs are pushing the uh, the uh, clutch, the abrasive against the surface of the flywheel. So uh, clutch is engaged, and that's how uh, how we're going to be running most of the time. I don't believe I'm going to be using a, a clutch to shift gears, but in any case, I'm not putting this on right now because it requires alignment and balancing and that kind of stuff that uh, I'm not I'm not quite there yet right now I'm still trying to fit figure out whether the motor is going to fit into the locate or into the space that I've got so one of the hazards of being paranoid um, right now I have this on the uh, one ton um, setting or one and a half ton setting uh, but I don't have enough reach, so my uh, jack is at the bumper, and my motor hasn't uh, yet gone far enough in. So uh, I guess I'll be taking it out, putting it down. Oh, maybe not. Um, anyway, I think I can drop it down and get it in, but it's just another one of those things that uh, only experience will teach you. So my first instincts were correct. Uh, this would have to be drifted into position, and I'm going to have enough trouble getting this thing in without, uh, without worrying about alignment, things like that. So we're going to pull it back out, put it down, um, change to the one-ton uh, setting on the uh, on the hoist. Oops. Putting the pin, moving the pin from here to here, uh, so that it's got the reach it needs for me to get the motor in where I need it. Uh, from this angle, you can sort of see where the motor is going. It's, uh, the plate, this red plate here is going to be lined up over there. This hole goes to here. Uh, this hole goes down here. Okay, from here you can see that I've got the uh, the axis. It's approximately where it's supposed to be. It's rotated a little bit, and uh, over here on the jack. I still have a couple of inches of space to move it back and forth. Because of the tight spacing of this motor, I should show that. Um, so you can see that the motor has to be sort of like about there. And if you look at the opposite end, that shows you that the uh, this shaft is actually sticking into the fender. So the idea is to dip this end down and kind of bring it in like this under the fender and then level out and push in. So that's what I'm trying to be testing. And it looks like I, uh, I should have put the uh, leveling bar onto the motor before I started doing this, so I guess I'll pull it out the second time and do that. Now with the leveler on, I've got control of how it tilts, whether this side's up or down, which is great. I have this hooked in new from the end. This is hooked by the, uh, the original lifting lug, so nothing's going to slide around. However, there is a bit of a problem. Just come back a little bit, and you see that the uh, the total height of the lift has uh, has gone up, and uh, it won't go in with the hood the way it is. So I'm probably going to have to take the hood off of the car.